Hi, I'm Judy Farrell and this is The Chai Sessions, my podcast for Merchant City Yoga, where I talk with yoga pals old and new, trying to understand better what it is we're doing when we practice yoga and why we do it. In this edition of The Chai Sessions, I'm talking to clinical research and health professional Heather Gwyneth Bird. I first met Heather way back in 2015 when she joined our yoga teacher training programme here at MCY. Heather has a first-class degree in physiology from Edinburgh University, a master's in psychological sciences from Glasgow University, and 20 years of experience working in the health research industry, both here in the UK and in the USA. And as well as completing her training to become a yoga teacher, Heather is a certified life coach too. In this conversation, she tells me about discovering yoga while working in Seattle, the challenges of her first ever yoga class, and in sticking with it, what yoga brought to her own life. She became so inspired that she decided to become a yoga teacher herself, and her exploration of yoga philosophy led her to further her studies in psychology and life coaching. We explore the concept of well-being and the intersection of self-improvement, self-acceptance and personal development from a yoga perspective. We talk about some of the significant challenges people are facing with their well-being just now, and what role yoga might be able to play. Heather mentions a recent study showing the effectiveness of yoga for depression and another for fatigue management following cancer treatment. There's a lot more work to do to integrate these findings into communities and healthcare settings, but it's really exciting. Heather also very generously reframes my accidental slip when talking about one of her degrees. I really enjoyed our conversation and feel there was so much more we could have covered. I hope you enjoy it too. Hey Heather, thank you so much for joining me. Don't know about you, but I have my trusty cuppa. That is is going. Yeah. So just before we get started, Heather, just a very brief introduction for anyone who's listening or watching and perhaps hasn't met you yet. Um, So Heather's joining us Um, or should I maybe say actually Heather's coming back to Merchant City Yoga in June this year um, and bringing her yoga and personal development program with her so I'm really excited to welcome her back because Heather qualified as a yoga teacher with us way back in 2016 Um, but that's not the entirety of Heather's skills and experience so Heather brings with her a first class degree in physiology. I'm using my notes, Heather, just to make sure I get all this right. A master's in um, psychological services from Glasgow University, as well as 20 years of experience working in the health research industry here in the UK and in the USA. And as well as training with us as a yoga teacher, she's also a qualified life coach as well. So very, very, well qualified and well experienced to start to chat about um, yoga and personal development and what that might bring. But before we start, Heather, I wanted to ask you, um, how did you discover yoga? What got you into yoga? Yeah, good question. I discovered yoga on the west coast of the USA when I lived out there. So nice with those kind of not light Californian it wasn't Californian it was it was in Seattle but I was living out there working in the research industry she said and I was traveling all over the USA at the time to different um, treatment centers research centers to review all of the scientific data and I was also uh, playing a bit of squash and um, doing some trail running because it's a nice kind of active part of the world and beautiful scenery if you ever get the chance mm. to go out and um, yeah, just like Glasgow on a rainy December day. Well, do you know what? <laughs> used to the weather, and I was like, no, this this is not rain, Seattle people. This is not rain compared to the west coast of Scotland. So, yeah, um, no, it was actually really lovely summers. Um, and so, I, yeah, I needed I needed to find something like yoga. I guess originally it was coming from it more from a, a physical perspective, and I wanted to build my core strength for my squash games and. I stretch off after my trail runs and things like that so um the Seattle Athletic Club where I was playing squash had had some yoga sessions and that's where I first found yoga which was excellent but I remember my first class and I remember feeling like a complete you know I probably 
stood out like a sore thumb anyway, being this Scottish pale person uh, with a funny accent. And then going into the yoga class, it was like even worse because they were obviously all pretty, you know, it was like an intermediate class or something. I didn't go for a beginner thinking, oh, that'll be easy. Um, and then it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was easy. It was um, oh, just such a challenge physically and mentally and socially and everything. So, um, but I felt the benefit, obviously, from that first class. Um, and as I started going to more classes, I really loved the relaxation aspect. I think that's something that'd be missing from my life at that point in time with a busy kind of corporate job and and a lot of uh, uh, high intensity fitness. So so it was nice to find that balance in yoga. And um, that's what it brought me. Yeah. Yeah. And from there and from your time on the mat, what then inspired you to become a yoga teacher? Yeah, so I, I got back from, from the USA. I had my daughter out there and then came back to the UK in Glasgow and I was working again, busy corporate job in Glasgow. Um, found a great teacher uh, close to my, my office and um, uh, I, I think it was a friend's encouragement, to be honest. One friend said, well, you could do that. I went to a class with a friend and he was like, well, you, could do, you could do that, you know. So that was part of it. Um, again, just no, noticing the kind of yoga glow and what it brought to my life. I thought oh, this is you know, something pretty special and I possibly was thinking, you know, career wise, do I want to do something a little bit different at that point in time? So, so that's why, you know, I came across your studio. I can't remember how, but I obviously listened to some testimonials and um, came to maybe an Ashtanga taster. And before that, I hadn't had done or hadn't practiced much, much Ashtanga yoga. So um, that was certainly taking it to a whole, a whole new level as well uh, for me. And Again, I loved that kind of really, you know, the physical sense of that practice and the strength that you could feel within your body. So um, so that's why I came to you. Yeah, it brings a, a different dimension, doesn't it? So um, the programme, the workshop that you're bringing um, to MCY is yoga and personal development. So I wondered from your own experience, um, what your thoughts on, on where and how yoga and personal development kind of meet or intersect like what's your thinking around that yeah so um, I think you know beginning that course with you Judy it really opened my mind so much I, I was perhaps beginning to to read a few more um, books and things that were coming from different um, philosophies not just western philosophy and then coming and doing the actual course and delving into the yoga philosophy with yourself was like kind of mind opening, eye opening for me. And I get it helped me move through a lot of self reflection at that point in time. And um, I'd come through a bit of a challenging time in terms of relationships. So I was probably at your course a little bit heart heartbroken, to be fair. And then, you know, delving into that philosophy and um, and all of those concepts and then how they apply in my own life and then the people around me and people I'm interacting with. That was all oh, just took me, took me places Um, probably changed me in a way, Um, you know, in terms of changed the, the things I would be talking about when I was out with friends or the people I was relating with. Um, and I just carried on on that path from that place onwards. I started the life coaching course, the harmonizing practice, which incorporated a lot of concepts of nature, which, again, is very synonymous with, with yoga, I would say. And um, and from there, I went back during lockdown, actually, and studied the master's in psychological um, psychological sciences. I think you said psychological services when I first came on the call, but it's true. Yoga, oh, Dada. Oh, my no, apologies. It's, it's, but the yoga, you know, the intersection, probably that is where the intersection is. It's in terms of um, yoga being an actual psychological service that you can draw upon. Um, so maybe that wasn't wasn't him, you know, out, out of nowhere. But so that intersection, I, I started... Uh, studying concepts and writing essays on concepts that interested me in psychology, such as attachment, such as decision making, such as authenticity. And, you know, when I went back and looked at the yoga philosophy, there were all very similar themes that we were covering within that psych you know, psychology course. Um, so that's kind of what led me to blend them together with the physical practice as well and with other somatic practices and um, pranayama, meditation, visualization, etc. Um, I guess just to make it a little bit more relatable from a Western perspective as well and bring it more into our day-to-day -day life. So how can we actually apply these yoga concepts within our day-to-day -day life, within the decisions that we're making, within the relationships that we're moving through and that kind of thing? 
And um, when you talk about the course and the programme and this particular element of the work that you do, you talk a lot about well-being. And I thought it might be quite helpful just to talk a little bit more about when you're talking about what what is it that you're talking about there? What is it that you mean by well-being? Um, I think in the the world, the, the kind of the world at large, and you know, within the the yoga world particularly, the word well-being may have been hijacked a little bit. Um, so just to be clear, what it is that that where it is that you're coming from on well-being? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I've been asked that question before as well. And the, the person that asked me, it was saying, is it a state of consciousness? Is it a state of being? And all these all these things. And yes, it is all of that. For me, well-being is a feeling within my body <laughs> that helps me navigate through the world with kind of more ease and grace, I suppose. And, and that's what I'm looking to bring through with the course and with the kind of psychoeducational materials. It's almost like a value system or different uh, topics within that value system that you can um, assess and analyze for your own life um, but then as I said incorporate the physical aspects and the somatic aspects to make you feel well in body and mind and then apply that to almost um, I think what it did for me was was help me find my place or help help me find my, my position within the world um, and and to move with a bit more grace and it's not been you know that wasn't just when I qualified in 2016 I was like yep know how, who I am now I'm going to <laughs> do this I made a few you know wrong turns along the way or you know maybe went off on a tangent about some concepts that weren't so well received etc um so you definitely live and you learn but I think coming back to this kind of system of um yeah like I said how we make decisions and how we incorporate the lessons we've learned etc and and how we use yoga as a, a um almost like a I want to say baseline but it's like something we can always come back to isn't it so yeah, yeah, it's it's always there and like it's a I think it's a foundation or something. Yeah. It's like coming, yeah. coming within our body. So that's yeah, all incorporated. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's there, isn't it? It's a place, but it's also um a practice, an activity. There's also a doing aspect um to it as well, which I guess makes it a little bit more difficult to to talk about because we we can't really be too specific because it can be different things. Like um, I once read um, a really neat thing that that basically said yoga is the means and the end. That's like mm-hmm. mind, mind blown. Mm-hmm. Um, there it is in a nutshell. Um, so... From your point of view, what are some of the the kind of more significant challenges do you think people just now are facing in terms of their well-being? And what role do you think yoga can play in helping them with that or with them? Well, I think obviously we had the, the pandemic in 2020 and, and everything that we're still I would say, in a sense, recovering from. Um, Most definitely, a, yeah. Yeah, a very, you know, physical fear and reality for some people in terms of experiencing COVID and whatnot or having loved ones impacted. Um, and I think, you know, I was working for a mental health research company through those years and as we came out of them and it then seemed to kind of, um, I don't think I can pronounce this word, but bird John into a, a mental health pandemic almost because people were really impacted by the lockdowns and by being cut off by from their loved ones and everything that we experienced through those years. Now, feel I, I feel certainly that um you know I was impacted on a on a mental health level by by that um time and and many people were as well and especially when we look at our younger generations, I've got. A, uh, almost teenage daughter and so those that age group in terms of their social interactions and how that was impacted so I, th- I would say certainly mental health is something that we're obviously all um, you know having our own experiences with and supporting loved ones with as well or or within our communities and jobs etc um, but some great things that, that yoga you know can be incorporated into I just saw the last couple of days an article in the British Medical Journal where you know yoga is recommended or exercise is recommended with yoga being one of the, the most recommended for anyone experiencing depression 
um, and they're kind of saying, you know, up a long line, uh, the same level as um, uh, psychotherapy and antidepressants, then exercise and particularly yoga should be, you know, part of that prescription. So, um, so that's one thing. And then also I work in cancer research. So I've also um, just read in the last couple of days that in terms of managing fatigue, following cancer treatment, then yoga is being recommended by, you know, the American Society of Clinical Oncology. So these are like great recommendations I'm seeing coming out. But I think there's a lot more and a, a lot a lot further we can go um, to integrate that into our communities and our healthcare um, settings as well. So that's obviously kind of coming at it from my professional viewpoint as well. But it's true for our loved ones or for anyone that we're encountering on a day to day. Yeah, and I mean, those those kind of articles based on scientific study are actually really exciting because, you know, working within the yoga world, we know anecdotally, anecdotally rather, how much yoga can help. And it can help in so many different ways. Um, but to, to bring it into the mainstream really requires investment in studies. And also there's a conversation around, you know, even just those two different populations that you mentioned there require a very different approach yeah. um, you know and potentially different tools and whatnot within the the yoga toolbox if you like but even within those populations and people are individuals and what they require from the tools of yoga is going to be slightly different as well but that's definitely an exciting um, development isn't it and to just start add, to bring it into mainstream it was particularly when intense that the exercise was effective in managing depression so your ashtanga classes are right on the mark do and you know heather slowly but surely bringing everyone over to the dark side <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, mean, I think like you say that those different populations need careful management and and how we can encourage individuals that maybe haven't been to a class before because you know, if somebody's really suffering from depression the last thing they probably want to do is go out to a class and, and join in with a bunch of strangers so I yeah. think in of integrating into communities and health settings as I said it's about actually having individuals that can go out into you know meeting these people and work with them uh, perhaps on a one-to-one -one initially um, but I, I'd see that it would be the kind of greatest kind of hurdle or barrier and actually getting out to to a wider audience with these types of interventions yeah it's, it's a really good point actually because the very population that we're trying to help are excluded simply because they're in that population and how it makes them feel and um you know and even with the best will in the world you know they may not feel like coming out and joining in and yeah um yeah it's, it's a challenge isn't it and and it's one that I think needs addressed because, you know, there's there's so much about yoga and lots of other um, health and wellbeing practices as well that that can help support everyone and help support the the health system. You know, the um, the NHS that we have. Um, you know, and I guess that's a whole other conversation here that we can have about how that can be supported and starting to talk about preventative yeah. um, health. Um, 